So U.S. drug maker uh, Merrick Sharp and Dome are currently conducting phase two clinical trials for a new COVID-19 drug designed to neutralize the coronavirus. The antiviral drug called Molnupiravir is expected to fill a major gap in the fight against the pandemic, specifically for people who do not want to get vaccinated. Phase three trials for the drug, which has so far shown promise in preventing progression of the disease and hospitalization are due to begin in a few months. Let's get you the latest on the story now. Zueleto Bashman is the managing director of MSD. He joins us now for more. Zueleto, it's great to have you with us on the show on such an incredible story, a once a day pill meant to neutralize COVID-19 in less than a week. Hi, thank you very much for having me. Um, it really is a phenomenal feat from a, from a science perspective. Uh, but, but I must say, we've already started our phase three clinical trials, mm -hmm. and we anticipate that the process will be completed towards the latter part of this year. And that is for phase three? Yes. So vaccines were, of course, a game changer. We were all waiting for, for that, you know, amid the peak of COVID-19 since it began. This takes that fight against the pandemic to a whole new level. Yes, I mean, I, we've always said that we believe that um, vaccines are a critical aspect related to what we can do to prevent mm -hmm. the spread of COVID-19. And so we see Molniprova working hand in hand with the rates of vaccinations. What's been always important for us as an organization was that we needed to focus on bringing to the fore innovations that were going to allow healthcare practitioners to have multiple options when they are thinking around what to utilize from a clinical perspective mm. when dealing with COVID-19. And certainly this treatment goes hand in hand with vaccinations and shouldn't be seen as a replacement in any way. So, so let's just go back to the beginning. The drug is a treatment after a person tests uh, test positive for COVID-19. Yes. Mm -hmm. So usually what would happen if someone tests positive for COVID-19, ideally you would want to intervene within the first five or so days of that patient having tested positive or had um, had first five or so days of the patient having um, shown symptoms. Um, and the patient would then get put on the treatment. And what the treatment effectively does, it limits the rate of viral replication and therefore prevents disease progression as mm. much as it possibly can. Um, into that hyperinflammation phase, which is the phase where we see um, large-scale hospitalization and respiratory symptoms. So limits the rate of viral replication. Does this mean that the treatment effectively kills the virus? Well, um, simply put, um, I'm, not a, I'm not a scientist, and so I can't, I can't sort of simplify matters to that extent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what, what it does do, it, it limits the rate of the replication of the virus within the person's system and therefore, you know, mutes the virus, if you can put it that way, in terms of causing um, large-scale um, symptoms and severe symptoms towards the latter part of the patient's illness. Mm. So phase one and phase two clinical trials have been com completed, correct? Yeah. And, and how did those go? What were the results from, from, those, from those two phases? Well, the results were quite positive. Um, they were published um, at, uh, and released at the ECMED conference a couple of weeks ago um, and certainly um, meets all the safety and efficacy um, sort of metrics that we were looking out for. Yeah. Um, we've now progressed into phase two. Three, I can't really go much into the details around phase three because they, that, that clinical work is still undergoing. Uh, but we certainly are quite positive around um, the potential for um, a positive outcome at the end of the day. I, I want to ask you a question. You have said that you're not a scientist. Uh, um, I wanted to ask you a question about, you know, how the drug does work. Is that taking it too far? It would probably be taking it too far. <laughs> yeah. um, and it, um, if, if it's a conversation that you do want to have, we certainly could set up a conversation yeah. with our scientific team. Oh, absolutely it is. And, and, and we'll definitely offline that conversation. Take a few details. Yeah. Suffice to say. Yeah, go ahead, Zueleto. The phase. Yeah, I was saying, so I was to say, are you able to hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Go ahead. Yeah, I was saying that the phase one and phase two clinical trial data that we've seen has been incredibly 
promising. And certainly that's one of the reasons that has uh, pushed us towards progressing towards phase three. Mm. And we're quite positive around the space that we're in currently. So, so the drug, uh, in terms of what it's meant to do, the trials for now is focusing on, um, you know, treating COVID-19 once you've been infected with the virus. You've not conducted trials as yet on prophylactic use of the drug. Yeah, the current phase three clinical trial process is completely focused on treatment um, of um, COVID-19 positive patients. We are still going to be progressing a clinical trial process for prophylactic use. Okay. So, Zoleto, uh, before we lose you, I want to try and ask you um, some questions specifically around the rollout of what will be a game changer in terms of our fight around the world for COVID-19. So what we saw when uh, vaccines were developed was that wealthier nations were pre-ordering vaccines uh, in bulk. As we now know, the African continent accounting for just over 1% of all of the vaccines that have been administered around the world. Are we going to see a repeat of that, of wealthier nations who are able to make these prepayments ordering in bulk ahead of time? Yeah, I certainly hope not. I think um, what we've done as an organization is we've um, developed a multi-pronged access strategy um, that, that consists of, number one, we've signed up already multiple low-cost uh, manufacturers on non-exclusive voluntary licenses. And those manufacturing partners would then also supply multiple markets with the very same product. Uh, but what we've also done is we've already started having conversations with the National Department of Health mm -hmm. in order to try and sort of um, open up a, a route of conversation that would allow for early access um, for South Africa for the product um, if the clinical trial work uh, comes out as positively as we think it would. But certainly I don't think that we would see what we saw um, with the vaccine um, 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 rollout. Um, because what we have learned through the process is we do have to have an element of agility. Um, and so we've committed to keeping those lines of communication open with the Ministry of Health. So, so, so you reckon that, that our own health ministry here in South Africa is taking a rather cautious approach, uh, as in they want to wait and see uh, once phase three of the clinical trials are completed before committing? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say they're taking a cautious approach. I think they're well within their rights to work in accordance with the set of rules that governs the work that the Ministry of Health does. Our responsibility, as I said, is that we have to keep the lines of communication open so that whenever there is new information that comes into the space that we share it urgently with the Ministry of Health. But certainly I don't necessarily think they're being overly cautious. They're working within a set of rules. Um, I can't go into a lot of details around the conversations that we've had, but certainly um, the Ministry of Health does have a keen eye on the product. Um, and when things do progress, I suspect that things will um, progress quite quickly towards mm. the latter part mm. of the year. So, so, we'll see how this yeah. so you anticipate the drug will be available for pre-license towards the end of the year, correct? Um, when, when, the, <laughs> when phase three is completed, sorry, Zuletu, uh, that's when it will be submitted uh, for approval to the health products regulatory authority here in South Africa? Yeah, so we would only make our regulatory submissions once all the clinical trial work is, is, is completed and that we're happy with the results that have been obtained. We certainly expect that it will be available to pre-licensed use for the latter part of the year in some markets. Mm -hmm. um, we can't preempt the South African um, regulatory process, uh, but we would, as soon as we possibly can, once we've got the clinical trial data, um, data available, uh, do all the necessary submissions and engagements with SAPRA. Swaletu Bashman, thanks very much for your time on this incredible story. He is the MSD Managing Director. A new drug, uh, phase three clinical trials of this new drug is currently underway. Uh, the aim is that it will limit the rate of viral multiplication in the first five to seven days of you being infected with COVID-19, and this would pr uh, uh, prevent progression of the virus, uh, hospitalization, uh, hopefully will be reduced as well. It doesn't do away with vaccines, though. So Leto telling us, though, that the drug will work hand-in-hand -hand with COVID-19 jabs.